It's by both great. of them. Yucko, where does the anger for Dan the Song Parody Man come from? <laughs> It, it really, I was just fucking around, really, about him, you know, putting ashtrays and towels, and it fucking snowballed and did a fucking avalanche on Dan, you know. About well, was it just you? I know that's what I'm saying. Everyone walked in. Well, Rich, I was, I was Rich. in your office. I brought up the story about the gift bags, and you go, go in there. So I went in there and I told the story, and and he turned it around as to it, the thing that pissed me off the most is that he says your lack of material, like. Like for him to say that to me, that was a kick in the balls. Like yeah, you got pretty angry. I, that pissed me off because you know what? He there's a lot of guys out there that could say that to me and they could get away with it, but he's not one of them, without a doubt. He got pissed off at Richard too. He was pissed off at it. Yeah, and I didn't even get to tell my story, so he could be pissed off at me. What's well, your story? Well, again, I don't have a story per se, but everybody comes to me and tells me their story. So the story that I went in with and I didn't have time for was, I guess Tim was having a lunch. Uh, downstairs at Del Frisco's, which is an expensive restaurant. And <laughs> I, I think that they went out of their way not to not invite Dan, but I guess Dan, if Dan gets wind of a free meal, he latches on. So I guess they went out of their way to make sure Dan didn't know about it. And then Dan just showed up uninvited, sat down and ate. And pretended like he was part of the mix? Yeah, I mean, that's a funny thing that Dan has. He's not like... um. He lacks the gene that makes you ashamed. Yeah, yeah, that 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 filter that you take a step back and you go, maybe I shouldn't be doing. And I know I can already hear the phone dialing, and Dad's going to be up on the phone any second, and he's going to say it's absolutely wrong. You've got it wrong, and fuck you. But that's what I heard. I I, I don't know it's true. That's the way I heard it. But would it be so bad for the guy just every now and then? Like he has a story, a, a, an excuse, an explanation for everything that's brought up that that random people bring up on the show at random times. Is there any point of him, any part of him that will stop and say, you know what, maybe I was out of line there? Dan, does Gary have it wrong? Of course he has it wrong. It's Gary. What are you fucking kidding me? Uh, First of all, sure, you tried to crow that, crowbar that story in twice, okay? And again, I didn't, I, I'm sorry if I misquoted my, misstated myself by saying lack of material. You obviously had a slow news day because you guys apologized to, apologize to me afterwards. How, so about I, fact, that, how about my lack of material that you beg me? You beg me for the CDs of every interview I do so you could put together your copy and paste songs with the audio that I have of the whack. If I have such lack of material, why are you begging me for it? It's not lacking material. I've never fucking begged you for everything. I asked you for something as a friend the same way as you have. And I'm sorry if you have a bug up your fucking ass now, but that was a totally bullshit news story. The fucking guy gave me a gift bag. You did a fuck. The guy, the host of the show handed me a gift bag. Dan, Here, the Dan, host, Dan, the host of the show was the one who told me you took the fucking gift bag. Yeah, Dan, I gotta, Dan, I gotta tell you, that's, again, don't be too mad at me because I'm only repeating the story to her, but that's a story that six different people came to me with. Right, because. Because Phil thought it would be funny. He came up and apologized, apologized to me afterwards. And I can get Phil Iazetta on the phone. You want him on fucking tomorrow, I'll get him on tomorrow. I and he'll tell you that he fucking sandbagged me. He fucking set me up. He handed me the bag. And then when he realized, when I was already gone and he was short with gift bags for his listeners, he goes, oh, Dan took it, so I didn't have it. So that he didn't look like he was unprepared because he fucking gave me a gift bag. All right, Dan, what's, so, the, story, what's the story on the lunch story that I told? Give me the truth on that one. Which story? The, sorry, the lunch story I just told about Tim. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. The one, about, the one that you said I had it wrong, the one that would uh, lunch at Del Frisco's and you showed up? Yeah, what story did you call in to refute? What Shuli was saying or what Gary no, said? No, but well, the whole thing, and Shuli was talking shit about me. First of all, I've never gone to a lunch that I wasn't invited to. If I went I went to lunch with Del, uh, at Del Frisco's with the gang and Tim, Tim walked up to me and said, hey, we're going to Del Frisco's, come along. So, I mean... Uh, you know that the whole fucking motif of the show is to throw people under the bus. All right, well, hold on, Dan. We're going to stop you right now because Jared's here, who's Tim's we assistant. Have a little rat and I'd like to talk to you. Jared, is Dan <laughs> being up, truthful? Dan? You're, you're not really being truthful because Tim invited just the guys on the show that day. You were there, I think, either because of a creative meeting or uh, whatever reason it was. I mean, it was a while ago, so I don't remember it specifically, but I remember if that you, you weren't remember, invited and I spoke. Dad, if you don't remember it specifically, then you obviously don't remember the specifics. And I understand that you're Tim's assistant, but also, can you admit as Tim's assistant, even though you're the guy that reads his emails, okay, that Tim may have said to me, hey, Dan, we're going to lunch, come along, because that's exactly what happened. I recall that when I, would I asked, never, I recall listen, when listen, I, I would asked never, Tim, you, you recall if Tim Dan was invited, he said, no, invite the guys from the show. So I remember okay. going to Richard and Sal and specifically saying to Richard and Sal, and I do remember this, that you guys are invited, but Dan is not. He's not taking everyone out because Tim's paying out of pocket for this. So okay. you showed up anyhow at Del Frisco's. I remember turning to a couple of the guys at the table and said, are you kidding me? Dan wasn't invited. And you sat down. 
Well, that wasn't the case. I was fucking shut up, okay? Because I saw... I gotta tell you, Dan, right. Dan, I gotta tell you, before you go further, you get set up a lot, brother. Listen to me. Knowing what type of throw people under the bus, fucking pussy scumbags you are, do you think I would ever fucking do anything to give you something to talk about? You manufacture shit to talk about when you have nothing to fucking talk about. Right. And again, Jared, I know that you're fucking Tim's boy, but Tim fucking asked me to go, okay? Tim has also made other assurances to me which never fucking came through, but I don't make the fucking issue of it, okay? Well, like I've also what? Like fucking what? gone to bat for Tim to do things. I'm not, I'm not going to bring him up because it was personal shit between me and him. And I'm not going to fucking throw him out on the air because I'm not a fucking pussy rat. Well, Tim, you should come down and and just you concluded this up very quickly it was dan invited to this lunch you know or what, what, you know what? It? tim's in you know what and if i misheard heard tim if i am that fucking stupid that hey come to lunch with us doesn't mean hey come to lunch with us have him pull a fucking receipt out if he paid for it out of his fucking pocket okay and i'll gladly reimburse him for his fucking can i ask you a question does if you pay tim for the dinner does that come out of what artie's supposed to be getting no it doesn't it doesn't Gary. uh That's you know, jason but, I mean, well, hold on dan jason are you here to defend dan uh, no, actually, I was here to defend Gary's story since I was the one that told him that. I, uh, you know, there were two lunches, so I don't know if Dan's mix, mixing up the first one, but the second lunch, I remembered it was like a concerted effort. I won't say <laughs> who, who works for Tim invited me to the lunch, but the message that went along with that said, you know, Dan's up here and we're trying to keep this from Dan because he'll show up. And so, you know, when he showed up at the lunch, everyone was just shocked. Like, how did he end up here? Like, everybody was trying to make sure. Let me tell you something. I've been to the, so Del Frisco's a few times for lunches. I've never gone fucking not invited. Obviously, no. We need to know. Scum, obviously, knowing the fucking scumbags over there, um, perhaps, you know, the, the words around it, you don't fucking want me there for whatever fucking reason. So somebody no, that wasn't Tim, it. Tim invited you there because I would never show up uninvited. Um, and every time I go, if somebody else was treating, I'm very respectful. I always order the cheapest thing on the fucking menu. I ordered a hamburger. But, Dan, for, okay, forget about right or wrong because there's definitely a, dis a discrepancy here. Are you surprised that this is your reputation here? No, I'm not, because you guys constantly try to fucking prank me, try, constantly try to throw shit at me, and you have nothing. You have fucking nothing, so you have to make shit up. Surely fucking, surely talk shit about me, talking about my fucking appearance, when the guy looks like a cross between a Holocaust survivor and a fucking cancer patient. But what does that do, but what does that do when I get laughs and you get nothing on and stage? And he's criticizing, I've, I've never seen that happen where you got laughs and I got nothing. Again, Please, I was, let me tell you, let me remind you of a story. Me. Let me remind you something in Florida, you're on stage dying, eating the biggest shit sandwich I've ever Ever seen a comic eat on stage for 10 minutes when a guy looks at me who's standing in the back room looks at me points to you and goes who wrote this shit for him and i and i told him you wrote this shit for you that's that's the shit you present on stage i i would happened? doubt that there's a fucking writer out there that would be proud to say i gave dan that surely, material surely i understand that you're a comic and you've been doing it for over 10 years and i know that's i've seen you do the exact same set for those entire 10 years without changing it up except for maybe adding like an elliot off an impersonation and shit like that and i'm sorry that you said i didn't mean dan, to say that dan, you're a bad comedian when i said lack of material i meant that you had a slow news day so you ran a bullshit news story on me and if you're offended about that then fuck you man i thought we were friends <laughs> when you fucking first came to new york with no money in your pocket and j-rock didn't fucking reserve the hotel for you i fucking bought your fucking hotel room for you until i got, you got my career started and i thank you for that dan no, no, no. i really I, do no 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 you didn't get my I didn't get, I put, well I put then what the fuck are you taking money. credit for what do you take credit for i came out here because i was booked on the stern show not to fucking room with you in an apartment that you're not even paying for <laughs> no shit i bought you you sitting here like you're fucking handing out people gold you you're fucking you're you're, uh, uh you're squatting in some guy's fucking you're, apartment you're with hair fucking, all over the fucking place. You're twisting the fucking story. It wasn't my apartment. I fucking put my credit card down for you to have a room at the Park Central on 7th Avenue. And I appreciate that. Listen, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. You attacked me first. You attacked me first. And I fucking picked you up at the fucking airport. So don't give me the So what did I... And what have I done for you in Vegas, cocksucker? What did I do for you in Vegas? Who got you to go up on stages that you fucking can never set foot back on again because you sucked so fucking bad who you helped you in you, vegas with all the fucking connections no i had in vegas you lying fucking pieces fuck shit. off you're a fucking scumbag you're a phony you're a phony scumbag you used to fucking do fuck That's off fuck off you had nowhere to go you're banned from the hard rock where else are you gonna go 
say this to my fucking face when it's not getting up on fucking. Oh, you gonna bring one of your shit. knives, Boy Scout? I don't need any fucking knives. <laughs> Give me a fucking, fucking break. All you, fucking do, all you do, all you do, all you do is get out it on the air and then threaten people with physical fucking confrontation. That's all. That's your only fallback, no, dude. No, I'm telling you, be a fucking man and see if you can look me in the eye. I don't need to look you I in the eye. The same fucking lies in person that you're trying to fucking get out. That's fine. I'll tell you. I'll tell you face to face when you come up here for your one day of work a week. This is all I can say. I hope your child, when it's born, looks just like you. Hey, that's mean. What? I said I hope his child looks like a father. That's mean. I know, is that mean? That's I, don't know, I, I don't know that you, is, is that, is that to, well, hold on, Dan, Dan, is that to imply that surely, Dan, stop talking for a second. One, and I've even fucking sat around and allowed you to wow. fucking run bullshit on me when you have a fucking slow news day. And then you Again with this slow fucking, fucking news day. The, the host yeah. of the show and numerous people told me not only did you take one gift bag, asshole, you took more than one. And I didn't even mention that on the air today. No, you talk, well, you're totally full of shit and you're fucking... Everybody Everybody's full of shit but you. Everybody's full of shit but you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. You have you you're never wrong. You can never take a step back and say, you know what? Maybe I was out of line there, right? We're all the oh, fucking scumbag line. lion rat assholes, right? Somebody handed me something, okay? You guys are constantly trying to fucking set me up for shit. But when I fucking see you, you won't look me in the eye and tell the same fucking lies because you can fucking do it over the airways, but you can't do it. To and my what are you gonna face. do? What are you gonna do when you see me? You threatening me? You no, gonna I'm come and punch you. me? You gonna come and you. fight me? No, I wanna see if you're capable of fucking telling the same lies while looking me in the face and showing the same anger and animosity towards me while looking me in the face because it's easier to lie to somebody or lie about somebody when you're not looking them in the eye. But Dan, here's a news flash for you. I'm not lying about what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what the fuck went down, what I was a witness to and what numerous people oh, were a witness to. Witness to and then, and I was in the fucking studio, jerk off. I was there. I saw the bags lined up against the fucking wall and I watched you fucking walk off with one. No, you watched, you, you weren't there when the host Crystal handed me, you watched me leave. Who was it, Crystal Gale with her fucking long hair that I missed up for you? Get the fuck out of here. Listen to me, Shuli, you're a fucking piece of shit, you're showing your fucking true colors. <laughs> I am, I am. I don't bring a second suitcase when I go to fucking help a friend so I can clean out their fucking room. I, that's a scumbag. That's a Never fucking did scumbag. It. Never did that. Of Never course did not. That. And again, Fucking Sal keeps trying to crow by that fucking story in that fucking Levy's old driver fucking said. Yeah, and now all of a sudden Yucca was witness to it. The last time it was somebody else. How many people fucking flew home with me, okay? Yeah. I got the fucking ashtrays right here that were from the, from the fucking pizza show. They weren't from the hotel. I fucking prevented other people from taking shit from Artie's room. Some people that used right. to work for Dan, show. Dan, <laughs> Dan, hold on a second. Can I, do you think that there's a concerted effort by everyone on the show against you? Or do you think that... It's just, you know, you're just another guy. It's part and parcel to be part of the show that everybody throws everybody under the bus. Everybody throws everybody on the bus. But you say, you don't, don't you, wait, anything, you, Dan, Dan, Dan. If they Dan. don't have anything fucking truthful to throw them under the bus with, they will conjure shit up. But you don't think you're well, getting it any worse? about the fucking ass came from Sal and he wasn't even there. Dan, you don't think you're getting it any worse than anybody? What? No, no, I think everybody gets it. But you know what? I'm not a fucking pussy. I'll stand up for myself. Hey, hey Dan, me, I know you said everyone's... Let me, you, let me tell you some good words to live by. Don't ever start shit with anybody, but don't ever take shit from anybody. I don't start shit with anybody. What fortune cookie did you read that in? It's fucking game on. That it's game fucking on. Hey, Dan, I was just wondering, because you said everyone's making up this shit, so, like, when the news wanted to do a story on you, like, Owen already $15,000, and you didn't want that story to run, and you got all angry, is that made up? And or you that threatened just, Langford? Yeah, you threatened Langford, and... No, I didn't know. I didn't threaten Langford. I yes, you did. It was very detrimental for him to run the fucking story. Hey, and hey, he chose to do it anyway. Listen, Jason, you're the fucking bitch boy of the office. You're yeah, a I know, fucking, Dan. You're a little fucking man cunt pussy. Even mm -hmm. back at fucking K Rock, you're always the gossip girl that would fucking IM people in the other fucking mm -hmm. offices about what's weird. I have a job here, Dan. Fucking rat on people. <laughs> what's that? I have a job here. I'm here, you know, five days a week. So yeah, I can't no, be that it, much it, of a bitch. It, it, it gives you more time. You tried out for a job here and couldn't beat Yucko the Clown. Yeah. Jesus. He's Double in the room. Oh, All Jesus. Right. <laughs> All right, slow down, everybody. Dan, take it. Dan, 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 hold on. Take a deep breath. I have a, qu I have a, qu I have a question for you. If anyone wants to talk shit about me, is welcome to say it to my face and just see if they're able to look me in the eye. But they they want to throw the punch guys, again, Dan? Guys, stop. Let me ask Dan a question because I think he feels like he's being ganged up on. Dan, were you and Shuli buddies? I thought so. 
I thought so. I'm fucking, I've, as unsuccessful as I may be, I've always tried my hardest to help my friends to be as successful as they could possibly be. Okay? I helped him out in his Get John's Job fucking thing. I fucking paid for his fucking hotel room when he had no place to fucking stay. I took him out to a nice dinner at Ruth Chris. I picked him up at the fucking airport. I've got, never done wrong by the guy. If he's ever needed anything from me, I'm more than happy to give it to him. He flew off the handle and got fucking upset because I said lack of material, which is an insult to his comic ability, which I believe his comic ability is very strong. He's been doing it for 10 years. I meant the lack of a news story because he wouldn't have run that bullshit story if he had something better and truthful to fucking report on. And again, I won't fault him 100% because if he was told that by Phil, because Phil thought it would be funny to fucking say that, okay, then it was unbeknownst to him that I didn't take the fucking bag. Uh, all right. Again, all right. I misjudged him for that. For that, I apologize. For the other shit that he's spewing and anything I said back to him over and above that, I have nothing to apologize for. Uh, Dan, hold on. Hold on. You also made it. Hold on, Dan. Dan, you got to let, let other people talk. Hold you on, also Dan. made a comment before that Sal's trying to, like, a crowbar in a story or make you so look bad. You the ashtrays and the fucking cowl. Yeah, that's right. Sal had three people try to crowbar that fucking story in. Well, he fucking had a... I'm not... Yeah. Look, okay. Dan, I'm not crowbarring a story in. Story in. I'm telling the story. I mean, when your name telling, comes, when you're you're, wait, but hold on, Dan. I'm, I have nothing against you, but when your shenanigans come up, the first thing that comes to mind is what you pulled off in that room in Vegas, told by it's Levy's driver. And I always not, said who it came from. It came from Levy's driver. You were not there, and, uh, yeah, and he doesn't lie. Today. Paul doesn't lie, and uh, hopefully, Paul, if you're out there, you can call in. Story. Today, you wanted to make a yucker. Now, all of a sudden, yucker. I work for the show. I'm going to incorporate things that are relative to the conversation, Dan. Okay, so basically the conversation, um, Yucca... Dan, sudden, I heard, I never even said this, but I heard, for, according to Paul, that when you got to the airport, that suitcase was so heavy, it was when you dropped it on the airport scale, it was so heavy you had to pay a $50 charge because it was over, and Paul said you opened <laughs> it up right there and you took pillows and bathrobes out. <laughs> the heaviest well, stuff in the suitcase. All, you okay, the, now you want the truth? The bag was six pounds overweight. I took out fucking... Seven fucking ashtrays that I bought, and I can bring. All right, wait. So wait, wait. So Paul, wait. So Paul, now, so you're admitting to this that Paul did witness this. Paul was Paul was there, and I took the fucking ashtrays out. And they weren't stolen from the airport. Yeah. How many fucking, fucking ashtrays can you steal to make up six pounds? What you what, what did you rob an ashtray factory? Are you kidding me? He said there were pillows. There were pillows tucked in there. You you literally mashed pillows down with bathrobes and toothpaste and those shitty razors that fall apart after one shave. And he, they said he was, there, there was little pieces of there was little pieces of hold on there were little pieces of soap sticking out uh, out of the zipper. I mean, hold on. Let Dan tell his side. Hold on. Jesus a couple Christ. shower caps fell out. I, I heard there was a busboy in there from the restaurant. Guys, downstairs. guys, guys. Let the, right, that's Dan. Not as fucking truthful as the rest of the story. It but was, nobody's telling the truth, Dan. Dan. How can that be? How can that be? Stop, shut the fuck up, because I'll smack your fucking dick out. See, why? See, see, see what, again with the physical threat. you got to get physical. Oh, hey, guys, no one's smacking anybody. Dan, right? Dan, I'm going to let you talk. It's Gary. I'm going to let you talk in a second. But I do understand that there's a lot of people, all different people with stories, and if you're a listener and you don't know Dan and you don't know everybody here and you're just listening to everything that's going on, it does sound like everybody's wrong but you. Yeah. To, to an outsider, it would sound like everybody's... Everybody's trying to find something to make me look like an asshole, and it just ain't fucking true. I took a fucking bunch of ashtrays from the Beecher Show, which were promotional giveaways, which, because I'm a motorcycle guy, they had motorcycle chain lick around them. I had them wrapped in my bathrobe, which I fucking take with me when I travel, because that's what I wear when I get out of the shower. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not in, like, the room that they book where they give you a bathrobe, so there would be no bathrobe for me to fucking take, okay? And that's the long and short of it. The kids that told Sal was story, who's somebody who's been trying to get, and he's a nice guy I know, has been trying his hardest to get on the air and get on the show in one way, shape, or form for at least 10 years. The closest he's ever come is when he got his nephew to be one of the kids that came up during Sal's Get John's Job Week to play Pin the Toothbrush on the Bowie, and that's his closest connection to the show. So, of course, he's going to do anything he can to try and have something. He was already his opening act. Wait, hold, on, hold on a second, Sal. Richard, you have a story, too? Well, the one that uh, we were talking about today where he wanted to back his van up to get all the e-junk.
Well, exactly. Sal, and Sal was right there, too. And Sal, and I, mean, I can exactly. back up Richard 100%. You can ask Doug Goodstein, and you can ask Richie Wilson. Well, they had no place to warehouse the stuff they wanted to keep, and I volunteered for them to use my warehouse because I thought it would be good for the show and that you might need to use the stuff again. At the time, I had a 6,000-square-foot warehouse in Fairlow, New Jersey. It was located on Banta Place, and all that was really left in there was my motorcycles, my tools, a few racks of equipment, and at least 3,000 square feet was open but doug and, again, and doug asked me and sal if we wanted any of this stuff they were going to get rid of it and we were like no and you were there with us because we were getting ready to go to lunch and you said well i'll back my van up and take this it wasn't stuff they were going to keep they had a whole warehouse full of stuff that they had no that, that they didn't know what they were going to do with and that's how it was brought to my attention you should have just brought up two or three suitcases Dan, and filled them up <laughs> jason you have confirmation on a story yeah. actually jared was going to tell us but he had to go first of all dan the last couple times i argued with you on the air you threatened to punch me when next time you saw me so i never no, i never i never threatened to fucking punch you i don't yeah all right, i'll pull the, the tape on that one yeah. but a, a, anyway i mean you already threatened three other people to punch them today but anyway real quick so going back to the lunch that you weren't invited to so the, so the story is is that tim told jared that he wanted to take out the guys here who work for him directly which meant no dan but dan you were up there today that day so jared went around and he like told like sound richard like listen try and make sure dan doesn't find out about this lunch he just wants to take okay, the guys no, say no more, jared. then you know jared's you know what? no no i can you know say what? more it's it's cool dan let her finish and we'll, we'll really? talk about your you'll, you'll, jared you'll told, absolutely be able to respond go ahead jason jared told me at some point he felt you must have gotten a whiff of the lunch because you started following him around like crazy to the point where like you know you would have followed him directly downstairs to del frisco so finally tim said gave the okay to have you come down but it's only because you wouldn't leave him alone so, that's so according to Jim. Okay, I knew nothing about it beforehand. I didn't know there was a cop. You know what? Invite me to a lunch now, and you can fucking eat my shit. I'm not going to go to the fucking lunch. Fuck you, people. You know you're going to pass up a free lunch. Fuck you scumbag. Is that why your breath smells so bad? You've been eating a lot of shit. <laughs> No, it's smelling your fucking lunch. I finally figured out why his breath smells so bad. He's not invited to parties and eat shit. Gary, when did Dan become like Scott Salem? Everybody's kicking the guy when he's down. I, you know, listen. I've what heard I've heard these do. stories from people. That's what we people do. That's what people with nothing better to do. That's what people with lower self self esteem do because they want to feel better about themselves. That's why you don't see me ever jump out and fucking dog pile on people and shit on people. So I got fucking no problem with it. I got no problem with it. You guys are a bunch of fucking pussies. Anybody that's trying to talk shit and fucking gang up on somebody, the gang mentality is for fucking weaklings. But Dan, but Dan, 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 Dan you could make you never fucking Dan. Hold on, I'm talking. You could make the argument that in your own way. You gang up on uh, people because, it's, it, it, you know, if this wasn't about you, you'd have a song parody ready about it for tomorrow morning. And I know while that's your job, that's also your way of ganging up. That's not ganging up. That's not ganging up individually. It's a, it's a group of people attacking. And I have no problem. I can defend myself in a group of people attacking, okay? Whether it's fucking physical or verbal. I don't give a fuck. Wait, wait, Dan, Dan, wait, Dan, I got an issue with that. So you're saying making a song parody about, let's say, you know, Gary's teeth or, or, or Sal's wife's emotional friend or whatever. You don't think that's part of jumping in because it's an individual effort? No. Gary's teeth is a fixture on the fucking show, okay? Okay, so that's not, it's something that he's accepted. I didn't make a single song about Sal's wife because I was respectful about that. The same way I didn't make any fucking songs about Artie being on drugs, because I'm respectful of certain things. When something is an established fucking topic on the show, then I'll make it a song. But I'm never going to fucking drive a nail on somebody if I think it's going to hurt. Because that's going to make a song about the hotel thing, man? Well, What's that? You can make a song about this hotel thing? What hotel thing? Your hotel thing. Welcome to the hotel where I fill my suitcase. <laughs> hotel of seven and and It's an empty place. <laughs> Actually, it's an empty place. <laughs> There's not a trace of pillows or ashtrays. I took everything from that hotel in my suitcase. <laughs> Even bathrobes, too. <laughs> I'm a greedy Jew. <laughs> Tully in New York City, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, I went to the ho I went to the airport. I put my suitcase down. The lady looked at me and said, "It's one hundred fucking pounds." <laughs> Tully, go ahead. Where's that? Where's that fucking clown? Um, no, I was just trying to think how many people have been at a Shuli show and said to the guy next to him, "Hey, who wrote this shit?" <laughs> Well, it wasn't my show, but Dan was on the show. It was a show that Levy and I were doing, and Dan was up there sucking the life out of the room, and the guy yeah. asked, who wrote his yeah. material? 
Hey, Shuri, let's just go to a club together in New York City any fucking night. We'll any day of the week. Is this gonna, any hold on. day is this of the week. Hold on, guys, guys, guys. Is this going to be like, like, guys, guys, guys. Be like uh, 8 uh, Mile uh, for comedy? Yeah. yeah. Comedy yeah. showdown. Yeah, right? Let's do it. The same fucking 20 minutes. Let's go to the showtime at the Apollo. I'll do a set there. Yo, Gary, that's... Hold on, Dan. That's a fair challenge. Let them go ahead. Anytime. Let's get an audience and see how they react. I have to tell you, I've never seen your comedy, and I'm not giving you any shit. The only thing is I know that you don't have as much experience as Shuli, so I would think it would be di more difficult for you, but I, I've never seen you. No problem. We, go, we just go to a random comedy room, not packed with stern fans, not packed with anything. And I, can I tell you something? The not last time I saw stern. Dan, the last time I saw Dan uh, perform, uh, I even complimented him on a bit that he did that I actually thought was really funny, and I told him about it, the, the one about your dad that you did, about your Jewish father, and I even right. complimented him about that. But, of course, you know, it was to my face, Julie. You're not looking me in the face right now. I just complimented you, know, you now know. on it, douchebag. Open your fuck, move the hair out of your fucking ears and listen to what I'm saying. I just complimented you on it on the air, like I did to your face. And if you were standing in the studio right now, I would tell you that you're an unfunny scumbag to your face today, like I did on the air. Hey, can we do the? Can we do well, the challenge, I'll, I'll, Dan? I'll give Dan, you the opportunity to do that in person any fucking time. Can we do the challenge tonight, Dan? Um, tonight I'm busy. I'm sorry. Unless you want to do it after ten o'clock. Oh, well, will. that's usually when people go to a comedy club. <laughs> Surely, could you do the challenge tonight I'll if we call found the Carolines? I'll say. Well, don't say. Let's not say. Let's find oh, another right. place. Okay. But um, again, surely the way to do it is unadvertised, without stacking room with people, non stern fan, regular crowd. How many well, minutes? Dan, how, how many? How many minutes each? Are, how is he stack? How would he be stacking the room with people? You're on the show. Shuli's on the show. I mean, is, do you think Shuli gets an advantage Gary, there? I say ten minutes each because ten minutes you could pack in your best stuff. Right. Ten minutes each. Ten minutes no, and no stern stuff at all. Just no audience up. at all. Yeah. Just I mean, why wouldn't, stand that's up. A, why wouldn't you advertise your comedy? That's every show, Benji. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what kind of logic is that? No, no. He's saying he's saying he wants he wants a fair audience. He wants to take the trial to another city. No, he's got a point. He does have a point about that. Yeah, I know. I, I'm in. So they're going to walk up and they're going to people who have no predisposition to the show. You don't have right. to announce it. You just walk up Surely, to a club and I let's see what happens. 20, I could laugh for 20 minutes straight at your fucking Elliot Offen impression. I could laugh for fucking 10 minutes straight at your Bobcat Goldsweet impression because I'm old enough to fucking remember who he is. But if we just go into a regular fucking room, okay, where people aren't going to fucking know Elliot, they're not going to know the other stuff, and you just do your regular material, the stuff that I love. The fucking That's fine, Dan. Book, Whatever you say. Just, 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 just Make Whatever a, hold you on. say. Just, just make... Dan, Dan, hold on. Dan. Dan, 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 stop talking. Jesus. Just make a... No Stern Show references. That's fine. I'm fine with that. that I've been doing... That I just levels stand up long field. before I started working here, and I got... <clears throat> I got... Unlike, you know... And Dan has a lot of material that has nothing to do with the show as well. Uh, so I'm more than happy. All right. I'm more than happy to do that. Ten minutes... No Stern Show references at a site you guys agree on. This Jason, is like, Jason, like 3 o'clock. We high. don't know if it'll be tonight, but, but whenever we do it, make sure TV knows about it because I want it taped and I want audio yep, no for problem. the show. And if Dan loses, he cuts his ponytail off. How's yeah. that? So, so what does Shuli have to offer? He's going to grow hair if he fucking <laughs> I'll, loses? I'll shave my ass hair. No, Dan, if you lose, you fess up that everything you said, every dispute you've had with all these so-called lies is truthful. You admit no, none of them are truthful, so I'm not going to fucking lie, and I'm not going to fucking lie under any circumstances. And I wouldn't want him to do that. If he... Let me tell you something. If I defense, if I take my best ten minutes, <laughs> and even if it kills, if you put it on TV, my whoever loses, and good minutes I have. Whoever loses, However, whoever, whoever loses, whoever loses has to kiss, kiss the head of my cock. Actually, oh, boy, uh, that's really gay. Yeah, yeah, for no, you. The, the, the South will win it no matter no, what. With the foreskin over it. You have to kiss my foreskin. Oh, oh, okay. oh, okay. oh. All right. so, Whoever loses has to kiss my foreskin. Boy, Sal, 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 some guys Sal, 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 Sal I, I, don't, yeah, I don't care that it's Dan or Shirley. Why would you want a guy to kiss <laughs> yeah, your penis? Because it's disgusting, and I won't bathe for two days. Oh. And it'll, it'll smell like, Everything is yeah, like a twat rash. Hey, Dan, 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 what determines, how are you going to have determine the winner? Audience. Um, we have the audience decide. Well, wait, wait, wait. How, but I would say, I would say the best way to do it is you do it, you bring back the audio, you play it, and us in the studio can decide not who was funnier, but we would decide who, which, uh, who the audience like more. Just to keep it even more fair, can we like kind of do like a, uh, like that TV show with the comics? Like maybe we'll get a comic, couple comic judges to come yeah, in maybe and we'll get do that. scores. Ralph Sorella, whose side are you on? Hey now. Hey now. Hey. I got to defend Dan uh, about a couple of things. Okay. First of all, there was something I called him about. I mean, it must probably like a year or so ago, where uh, I had an idea. But something was going on in the show, and I wanted to. I just had was pitching him an idea to write a song parody about something, and he thought it was really funny. But he said, "You know, I can't do that because there was some situation where he just thought it was too much piling on." So I think he really he's being honest that he does have scruples with that, and I also think that. 
for some reason, people don't like Dan. He's dismissed, and and I think people want to think the worst of him. So when he opens his suitcase, and he has, it sounds reasonable that he travels with a robe, and, you know, there's ashtrays in there, but quickly they jump. Come on, he he stole, wait, 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 wait. Were let, there any poker chips in there, Ralph? Let Ralph, wait, wait, let, let Ralph let, make let his case. Finish. I've been talking for a while and, and, and knocking on this guy, but... You know, maybe he does travel with a rope. Maybe it's reasonable. Maybe there's ten things that could go either way that are reasonable, and it just goes the other way. Maybe I just understand him because it's birds of a feather. <laughs> but, 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 Ralph, Ralph, That's Ralph more like it. Answer, go back to what you originally said. Why do you think that people, because what you're saying at the core of this is people don't like Dan, so they want to think the worst of him. Yes. Why do you think that is? I, I, I think he rubs people the wrong way. I think he has an appearance that, like, may turn people off, and they just kind of goof on him. I mean, people... People goof on Dan. Just I see it in the office when I'm around there, and I can see he's he's like a butt of jokes. And and uh, but, but I can tell you the reason why he's the butt of jokes because I hear it too from time to time is because of these stories. So which came first? I think I think uh, from the way I remember it, I think he became the butt of the jokes because these stories kept growing. But You're Lisa, saying it's the other but, way around. But I think it's like Lisa, Lisa G. You guys, a lot of guys in the office just don't like her, and I don't understand why. I uh, and and like Dan, I think, is a stand-up guy. I think he, he, he you know, he puts himself out for people. I, you know, you paint him to be like an asshole, and I don't think he is. But, Ralph, there's a difference between not liking someone and breaking somebody's balls. You could still like the guy and come up with stories. And, yeah, and but, make... this, but, you, but this is not breaking his balls. This is making him look like a real piece of shit. I mean, but somebody, we, somebody, but tunes are... in, but somebody tunes in and listens to this, and he's, you know... A, you know, it sounds reasonable that Dan's like, hey, I'm going to do you guys a favor, and I'm going to throw all this stuff in my van and put it in stores for you, because I know that Doug had nowhere to put that shit. There was a real problem going on. They didn't have where to put props and stuff, and Doug's like, I just want to get rid of it. I know they were still looking for some of that stuff after the fact. So Dan's trying to do a favor, and then all of a sudden he's an asshole pack rat just trying to throw shit in his van. So, you know what? It's kind of fucked. No, you know what, Ralph? You make a fair point, and Dan, Ralph's got your back there. Yeah, thanks, Ralph. I appreciate it. You know what the thing is? Again, I don't have the appearance that the other guys fucking have there. I fucking look the way I look. I am the way I am. And people might make an immediate assumption on what type of person I am based on the way I look. They have they have no idea. With the exception of probably Artie and Howard, I probably bought more meals for people than anybody else in that fucking room. I've lent more money to people than anybody in that fucking room, okay? And... And I'm, I'm a very fucking giving person. And like I said, I don't fucking start shit with anybody. But I don't take shit from anybody either, okay? And this picture has been painted of me, which couldn't possibly be more fucking far from the truth as far as the type of person that I am, okay? Anybody needs anything from me. I fucking drop what I'm doing. I'm never too busy to fucking help anybody out, no matter how busy I am. If I got my daughter with me, I'll drag her along. Hey, hey Dan, I just threw one story in defense. He did save that intern that time. What do you yeah. I, saved it, I, I saved it from being raped by changing my mind, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Dan, we, That's right. Dan, wow. we got to take a break. I'm glad you called in and defended yourself. If you felt like you needed defending, yucko, man, generating a bunch of controversy around here. Everybody's going to take a deep breath. Teddy, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get yucko. Bay Mr. Bloodspot. Well, no, you can't ban him. I'm just not going to read it. Oh. Now you can ban Mr. Blood Clock. If I see more trolling, it's going to go up to five years.